Well, it really uh, goes back to a, a phobia uh, that lies at the bottom of a lot of uh, Republican and Libertarian philosophy in the US about the nature of government and, wh and whether government is, is even uh, desirable or necessary. You might remember there was a famous quote of Ronald Reagan's where he said, government isn't the solution, government is the problem. Uh, and he asked a, uh, a fellow called Grover Norquist to start something called the Club for Growth, which was designed to lobby continuously for ever lower taxes and less and less tax uh, on, in the US. And Grover Norquist produced um, a famous phrase where he said, accused of wanting to abolish government altogether, he said, I don't want to abolish government, I just want to shrink it down to a size where I can drown it in the bathtub. Uh, and, <laughs> and ever since then, um, the, the US, and particularly, uh, it's the Republican Party, this is, this is their uh, fetish, uh, has been uh, prepared to do just about anything, uh, including, um, well, to, th there, are three, there, are three, th there are three practices which in other countries would be regarded as reckless, um, and irresponsible, but in the U.S. Uh, have become normal. One is the fact that the U.S. Congress has not produced, the U.S. as a whole, has not produced a normal annual budget since 1998. Uh, they have not brought down a, a single coherent set of appropriations bills uh, in place for the new year since 1998. So it's a quarter of a century of continuous uh, brinkmanship, uh, negotiation uh, and, and last minute um, drama simply to keep the US government funded. Uh, second, one of the results of that has been that when they can't reach a final agreement, they lapse into what they call shut down the government and non-essential services, so-called non-essential services of the US federal government are shut down. And those shutdowns are constantly uh, threatened now and have become a normal part of the uh, US negotiating parlance and armory which in other developed countries is, is just considered really extreme and reckless. Uh, and yet, uh, day to day, it's now a, a crisis tool that has become a day to day management tool in the US Congress. And the third is the, is the one that we've just seen resolved, at least for now, which is the uh, crisis whenever the debt ceiling, uh, which is legislated by the US Congress, needs to be raised to allow uh, the US to continue paying its bills. Uh, and, and those have all become standard tools and a new normal uh, in the US, and this was not always uh, the norm, but has now been accepted as such. Yeah. So then what lasting damage does it do to government, to the ability to provide services to people who might not be in the top one or two percent of the earners that seem to always want reduced government, reduced taxes? Yes, well, it, first of all, it makes the uh, US uh, system and funding of government inherently unpredictable and less stable. Um, so far, they've broadly gotten away with it, which I think uh, probably only encourages the, the Congress to do more of it. Um, of course, one of the implications of this is that, uh, by contrast, other great powers and the rival here for uh, dominance of the global financial and economic system, of course, is the Communist Party of China. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party need do nothing by way of promoting its own system of government as a more stable and rational way of doing things, so long as the US showcases this nutty, madcap, uh, last-minute uh, crisis uh, management system or management by crisis. So it, it inherently undercuts the credibility of the US as well as its future stability and the fact that uh, the, the Republican Party is not yet content and wants to continue down this path. Um, and here's a good example that, that has just cropped up in the last uh, weeks, Bev. There's a, so there's a thing called the Overton window, which is the, the range of ideas that are considered acceptable uh, at any one time to consider. And because the right in the US has succeeded so well uh, in pushing these ideas of ever smaller government and ever lower taxation and, and delegitimizing the whole concept of government uh, a, a, as a positive force in society, uh, that the Overton window keeps moving to the right. And in the latest, uh, two, well, two developments I would nominate. One is contained in the, in the detail of this debt ceiling deal, uh, and that is that the Republicans insisted 
that funding for the IRS, which is the American tax office, the Internal Revenue Service, had to be cut. Now, Biden had only just last year succeeded by increasing funding for the IRS by 80 billion US dollars to help it crack down on tax cheats and enforce tax law. The uh, Republicans insisted that that be cut, and they, in the event they've managed to cut a little over a quarter of that funding. Now, they, they don't want to fund the tax office. Uh, now, that's because, again, of this philosophical position that uh, maybe for the rich, paying tax should be optional. And the second development is that a new candidate for the Republican uh, candidacy for the presidency, uh, a guy that you probably haven't heard of yet, uh, and he is a fringe candidate, Vivek Samaswamy, an, an entrepreneur, uh, he's proposing in his platform for the US presidency as a Republican candidate to abolish the IRS altogether. Now, you have to ask yourself, uh, what sort of nation state can exist without uh, ta collecting tax <laughs> revenues? It's the abolition of the nation state as we know it. So the Overton window keeps moving to the right. The ideas keep getting more extreme. Uh, and it's an, it's an unending uh, campaign to, as Grover Norquist said, uh, drown the government in the bathtub. Yeah, which is astounding. Yet, we, you know, as you point out, China passively watches on and potentially then could overtake the US. But at the same time, Australia keeps putting its weight with the US as a reliable partner. That's right. Uh, and, you know, obviously Australia has no control over how the US political system behaves. Uh, but it is a risk for Australia and any US ally. Uh, and, it, it, you know, it should make us worried about the future stability and reliability of the US. Um, and yet, uh, how many major allies do we have? How many treaty allies do we have? Well, we only have one. Uh, and it would be reckless to cast it aside. So really, our only, Australia's only alternative is to hold on to the alliance and, uh, and, and pray. <laughs> As I'm sure quite a few Americans are doing right now. Good to talk, Pete. Thanks so much. Pleasure, Bev.